What's up guys, Keith here, two guys how to. I just want to show you this 72 Super Beetle that we got and all the little rat rod things that it's got on here. If we just picked this up, we're going to get it running. The guy uh, said it wouldn't start and it's been sitting a while, but uh, it's got great tires on it. It's got some aftermarket bumpers made out of your diamond plate. Uh, the, the turn signals have been moved up to sideways teardrops and the tops have been taken off and just kind of bent it where the, the old turn signals used to sit up top. It's got the cool mirror on it, solid mirror, as well as your, uh, your little vents for the windows. And another sun visor made out of that diamond plate. Pretty heavy duty, it's actually quarter inch stuff. The windows are tinted. Uh, the upholstery's not bad. Actually, the upholstery's really good. Uh, we gotta re reset the track on the seat, but you can see it's all complete. The horn's up under here. And uh, stick shift with the empty shifter in it. Emergency brake and the other vent. Uh, vent levers are still all there. Everything's good. The clutch feels really, really tight. The uh, interior uh, headliner isn't bad. It's a little beat up in the back back there. I don't know if you guys can see it, where there had some water leakage from the window. But uh, we don't care about that. It's a rat rod. We're gonna repaint the rims and, and touch up some stuff on them. But you can see even the back, back motor's got a little bit of chromy crumbs on it. And it looks like they didn't have the, the coil mounted correctly. And uh, Maybe they didn't have a ballast resistor in there to compensate overload, and uh, they burned out the coil. And it did come with an extra coil. And you can see where they marked off the, took off those big, huge tail lights back there and just put the teardrops on there, as well as with the nice little exhaust sticking out. It's got a trailer hitch back there for your mountain bikes or a small trailer, as well as that custom bumper. And now uh, she needs a little bit of love, but uh, I'm gonna order a new hinge for the side. Better. It makes a big, huge uh, creaking noise, but uh, other than that, the interior is good. The guy reskinned everything. Everything's working as should. I just put a new battery up under the seat. And uh, we're going to roll this thing off the trailer and uh, get it over to the shop and start working on it. So let's get this thing off the trailer real fast. trailer out of the way and we'll move this buggy on over to the shop. Hey, how's it going guys? Keith here, two guys out too. And uh, June's at home today, but I am had to get out of the house, just work on something. But um, you saw us take the trailer, or off the trailer the other day was a 72 Super Beetle here. And it's kind of rat rod out, the flat black. It's got a little bit of heat up, you know, but it's got the nice teardrop tail lights that took off the, the stock ones, as well as the blinkers up in the front and kind of louvered it out up there. And that's why I liked it. I thought it'd be kind of a cool project to, to work on. But um, it's not starting, and it looks like uh, they got the tag in the, the glove box, like maybe they bought it, didn't quite get it started, maybe didn't use a uh, ballast resistor in between the coil, and the, the, the coil ended up breaking where there's no fire. I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, I'm back in here, and just want to show you guys the day one of actually getting one of these old cars started. I've never actually worked on one. Uh, we've worked on some dune buggies and stuff, but I haven't really had too much time to mess with the air-cooled Volkswagen motors. Um, this could be a 1600cc, I don't know, unless we, you know, break it apart and check the pistons, it could be bored up. It's got a lot of chrome dress-up that needs to be cleaned up, and nice, uh, nice pulleys and everything. Uh, even a holder for the coil, it's not mounted correctly, and the coil rock wire's too short. But first and foremost, what I want to do, of course I want to check for spark which I'll do, and I'll probably wait till Monday for that. 
But if you look around at everything on here that needs it, I can notice it, it needs a fuel filter. Um, the wires aren't quite hooked up. This wire here is broke. Um, I do have a wiring diagram, but it seems like every wire in here is just super brittle. I mean, you go to move it and, a, and it should be flexible, really flexible. And they're just super brittle and they're breaking. So it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge to get some spark on this, especially if there's a ground that's off and it's not completing that circuit to the battery. So we're not getting continuity. But first and foremost, um, it came with actually a fuel filter was in a bag in there. And uh, it looks like they got a sticker on here from J-Bugs. And I've heard about them. They, they carry pretty much everything for the Volkswagen Bugs and they're online. And this fuel filter came in a, a package in there that I moved into the office to copy down the code number, even though this is just your traditional, uh, you know, see-through fuel filter. You just got to make sure you install it correctly. And uh, we're going we're gonna to swap them out. Basically, the fuel filter, you can see it's got the canister and it's see-through. And you want to make sure the gas goes up and hits that back plate of the filter. And you can see the elements in there. And then it goes out the front. You don't want to reverse it. If you reverse it, it'll still work. But it's better to catch more debris if you install it correctly. So we're going to have the filter side facing the way the gas fuel comes in. And we're going to have the other side where the filter it isn't. You can't really see it going out. So let's, let's hook this thing up. It looks like they got a 7 millimeter uh, clamps on here. So we're just going to undo those. Take this fuel filter out. And it smells like somebody tried to have it firing, uh, but it smells a little rank. And we want to make sure we do the filter placement fine. This is going into the carburetor here. It's coming out of this pump here. Fuel line's coming up. So once again, we want to make sure that butt plate is going down towards the gas tank. And the other side's going up towards the carburetor to trap all that fuel. But these are good fuel filters because you can look in and see how dirty your gas is. You can see that the, if it's dirty, you can replace it. And it came with the car, so normally I, I would grab one off the shelf in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one since it's free. It came with the car, just get it out of the shop and get, get it on here. I can look around as I'm doing this and I see a lot of wires are, are off super brittle maybe they broke some of them are almost broken and all that can add up to just no spark so let's give a couple cranks on these you don't want to overkill it and I'm looking around at wires I do see one broken here I and mean, I'm not quite sure where it goes I can't really see it at the end to it which is going to be a little more difficult normally if you can see the end I could just cut it off and replace it and I'm, I'm not seeing one here it looks like a ground and it might go to this actual the generator which gives us our, our charging uh, power back to the battery and if you look at some of these wires going to the coil they're 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 brittle as well I and mean, they're on here but you've got a couple that are just ready to break off this one actually has been broken and you can see it's not even together right here let me move this in a little closer for you guys. I think what we're going to do is we're going to finish up with one of these wires. Looks like it's partway in this heat shrink. Somebody had started but uh, didn't quite finish. And this is a connector these are little butt connectors you can get them in blue and red whatever and the wire goes in each side and you, you squeeze it down and pinch the wire in there and then you heat these ends and they shrink and i'll show you how to do that here in one second so let's get our crimping tools and this particular tool has the, the red for, for crimping the what size so i'm going to use a little bit of dialect try grease on here Put it up in there but first i'm going to put on a piece of wire loom find a nice size piece in here let me get a piece and put it over there. 
and it's actually not a loom, it's a heat shrink. But I want to make sure I put a piece over top of it to protect it. Even though these are heat shrinkable self-sealing, I kind of overdo it a little bit. Check the wire out, but uh, we're just going to keep plucking along with this thing until we get all the wires back in order and we get them started. Once we get spark and you got gas, it should definitely go. So uh, get that good and get in there and let's just crimp this thing down on it. You can solder these if you want. I don't. Some of them I do. These I'm not going to worry about right here this one. So I'm going to overlap it. You can see it shrinks down right around the wire. I'll go ahead and put this other heat shrink over top. Melt that down. And you can get this heat shrink at your local hardware store or freighter online. And it looks like they got another pull wire that's off. And I was tinkering with it earlier. Both of these wires went to one connector and it was just barely hanging on by a thread. So I went ahead and I took my soldering iron and I crimped it, opened the crimp back up, put it in there, went ahead and soldered it. Let's just go ahead and melt this down one more time. We want to make sure these two connections are, are really good and tight. And you want to get the wires, wires uh, pretty hot as well as the solder. That looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and plug that back on this coil. I'm going to have to remount this coil up higher. I'm going to have to get uh, another longer coil wire that goes from the distributor to this actual coil. And I'm gonna open this end up just a little bit. Looks like it's pinched a little too much. Pull this heat shrink down around it. Get back pretty close to it also. This makes it a little bit more bulletproof. Connect that and we'll get the test light out and see if this thing's even getting spark at all. All right, so Tony should be here in a second. We can have him turn it over and we can check the spark back here. And I'm going to try to figure out, look at the electrical diagram and see where this ground goes. If not, I'm just going to cut the end on it right now, strip it off and get it ready to connect to something because it's definitely super brittle and it needs some kind of connection on there it's got to go somewhere otherwise we're not going to get complete circuitry all right i got this test light here tony's going to hit the ignition i'm going to take the roach clip part the little clip part ground it out put it on the black part of the coil and touch it over the other side which is my hot side go ahead and turn the key over all right, we got power back to the coil, so that's good. That means we are getting power through the coil. Now we just got to make sure it goes to the distributor down in these points here. All right, go ahead and uh, turn it over. Yeah, turn the key over. Yep, yep, try to start it. We're going to look down at these points, see if we get some spark. Do it again. All right, let's make sure I'm going to swap the roach clip over to the positive side, touch down in here and see if we can get this uh, distributor's grounded at all. Go ahead. Grounded. That's good, but I'm not seeing any spark. So the next next thing is really just to go to the clean off those points with a little bit of uh, emery cloth. Let's see if we can get some spark that way. Hold on real quick. Here.
and I'm just gonna go down and hit these points with this emery cloth, this little paper cloth right here. Put it, open these points up, put the paper down in there, and I'm gonna fold this so when I put it down in, in between the points, and I pull it out, it cleans it. You got the key off? Yeah, it's off. Okay, keep it off for a second, please. I'll make it a little thinner because uh, it's hard to get down in there. A little teeny distributor. And basically, I just open the points. I let them shut on top of the sandpaper, and I'm just going to pull it up. I'm going to do that about three or four times. And I'm going to pick it up, and I'm pushing the, pushing the prongs back together. Let's do it one more time, see if we get some spark. Sometimes the points just need to be loosened up and readjusted. Maybe somebody put the points in here and they didn't even adjust them. One more time for good luck. All right, try it again. One more time. We're not getting any spark from the points. All right. Okay, we've been doing some tests on this bug. We just got it off the trailer, got it over in front of the garage, and I've been just going over some wires and checking for some continuity. So uh, basically, on the coil, you got your negative and your positive, and you can see the markings on them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the, the positive ground, and I'm gonna touch this test light to anything that's, that's uh, excuse me, I put this on the negative ground, Anything I touch that's positive is gonna line up, light up inside here with the key on. If I wanna switch it over to the positive side, anything that I touch wire-wise and it lights up, then I know it's a negative. It's always opposite of the, the different end. If you put this on a negative and you touch this to a negative, nothing's gonna light up. If you put this on a positive and you put this on a negative, it's gonna light up if the continuity of the circuit is, uh, is complete. So let's turn the key on. And we're just going to double check this one loose wire over here that I'm not quite sure what it goes to. Um, and I checked the diagram and I couldn't see anything on the wiring diagram for this. It looks like it should have three wires on the generator. And it's got one grounding it out, one back over here, and one in the front. It looks a little rusty. Uh, we'll take that off later and clean it just to make sure our current is charging our battery if we get this thing fired up. So let me turn the key on. And I'll show you what I mean with the test light. So basically, I'm on the, the negative side. If I touch it to the positive side of the coil, it lights up. So anything positive in here, if I touch it on there, even the motor block would, would light up up in here. And we're gonna test this wire because I'm gonna find out if this wire is a positive wire. And it's not. I'm gonna switch this over to the positive side. And anything negative I touch, you see, you can see it light up. Anything light up. So the, the, the block is grounded out. That's good, that's a good sign. Uh, we've got the back of the alternator is grounded out and we're going to test that wire that I'm unsure of where it needs to go and it's not lighting up so as of right now I'm not going to worry about it I did swap the coil out with uh, one that was in the back seat you can see down in there is awfully uh, it's rusty you can clean that out but it came with the new one so I was just curious I just went ahead and lined them up like this on the positive I put all the uh, on the negative, I put all the negative wires. On the positive, I put the positive wire. I did solder the ones that I showed you, and I heat shrinked everything so nothing's touching. And I can tighten up this wire sequence a little better with some nice wire loom or what have you. But let's fire this thing up. We got the new fuel filter, and you can see uh, just by me cranking it over to see if I'm getting spark back here in the points, and I just cleaned the points, and I sprayed them a little bit with some, uh, some starting fluid just to clean off the dust and debris that when I when I when I did have it open and I'll show you you take this distributor cap off. This is just like any other motor. It's just a smaller Volkswagen, rear wheel drive air cool. You got your points down in there that we cleaned with that emery cloth. Remember we had that little piece of emery cloth uh, that I cleaned everything up with. I went ahead and took the, the rotor button you don't have to mess with it. Just leave that alone or you can take it off pop it out it only goes in one way and you can see inside there 
and you can take a little bit of that emery ball if I can find out where, what I did with it. Got so much stuff going on. And you can clean up just this little end right here. If you don't have any, you can always rub it on the asphalt real lightly. But uh, let me just get a little piece of emery cloth again, just to get you guys and show you what I'm talking about. I might have blown away. It's a little windy here. And uh, you can get a roll of this stuff online or at your local hardware store. How we've had this for years or Harbor Freight. And I'm just gonna rip off a little piece. You guys back a little bit more. And I'm just gonna go ahead and clean a little bit on that rotor button until I order a new one from the store. Just clean that off, just get it nice and clean. You can tell it's, it's got a connection right there, so we're gonna clean that a little bit. Just lightly to get a better, better connection, better spark, hotter heat. And you can see how much cleaner that's coming. And then I took a little bit of starter fluid and I sprayed down there on the points. I opened the points back up. Um, you can use electrical cleaners way better. I'm out, so I use a little starting fluid and then I let it air out. I'm not gonna try to start this until I see it's totally dry in there. You don't want it to ignite and catch something on fire. So let's put this rotor button back on here. And it, like I said, it only goes in one way. You can take a picture of it, make sure the snaps in, it's good. The cap should fit down on there nice and snug and flat. If it doesn't and it rocks back and forth, it's not on right. And you snap your two clips back on there. Check all your cables, make sure they're tight and clean. And uh, let's move this wire out of the way here so we don't chop it off when we're trying to turn it over. Let's fire this thing up. You can see the fuel filter down in there. It's got a little bit of gas in it. The gas doesn't look too bad. And since this thing's been sitting a while, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of starting fluid just down in the carburetor. Just a, just a little bit. I don't like to use it too much because uh, it burns way hotter than gas, but we're gonna let it sit there and kind of dissipate, get the fumes in there and try to fire this bad boy up. Let's see if she starts. Nice. I think the gas is pretty old, but we got fire, so we're good. Now this, now I'm gonna go ahead and suck the gas out of the gas tank and put some fresh gas in there and some gas treatment, as well as just go over a couple things and, and keep checking it. You can see it's uh, that the gas is separated from sitting so long. And with that ethanol and the gas, those two will just separate. The water will go to the top, and uh, they'll just separate out into kind of like a gelish water. So. Uh, let me get let me get over to the front gas tank. Pop the pop the trunk, which is actually in the front on these bugs. Suck the gas out and add some gas treatment, and uh, I'll show you guys that, and we'll be back. All right, we just got this bug started, uh, which I'm I'm ecstatic about. I thought it was going to be a major wiring issue, something extremely major of why the guy was selling the car, uh, but I'm happy. So we're going to go ahead and pop this uh, fuel door. If you open the a little hoop kind of right here on a rope. It looks like an air vent kind of pull cord or a pull start for a lawnmower. You just pull that lightly, boom. Door swings open. And uh, I was gonna suck the gas out, but it actually doesn't smell that bad. So what I'm gonna do is I get this stuff at Walmart and it's the Super Tech Motor Treatment. They're not paying me to say this, but uh, it's motor treatment for cars, diesel, and oil. You can put in the oil, crankcase, whatever you want to do. I always pour it in here and it's like a stabilizer, fuel in, uh, injector cleaner, and all in one. And it makes that old gas good again, believe it or not. And I know you hear that all the time. This stuff works, man. For, it's almost five bucks a can. It'll do up to 12 gallons. But uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pour it in here. We don't, have, we don't even need a funnel. I like this car even better now. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not sure how much gas is in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a whole can in there. 
It'll do up to 12 gallons. This tank looks pretty big. And if it's a little bit more, uh, more ratio of this than gas, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. This stuff can work in diesel trucks too. And uh, most of them won't. It'll harm the diesel. So this is really good stuff. Pour that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and shake this car up a little bit. I'm going to hang on the bumper and uh, kind of shake up that gas tank. Get that fuel treatment all over the place. Instead of sucking the gas out, I'm just going to add the treatment to it and try to start it. I think that's pretty good. Let's try to start this bad boy up and see what happens. It started before and it runs, but from it sitting uh, for so long, the gas is, is just going to be a little kind of funky. It's not going to really want to run right. The spark plugs are going to be a little bit fouled out, but not too bad. Let's do it again. Let's try it again. Pump the gas a few times. Fire it up. It's got a little smoke, but that's that's to be expected on this old car. And uh, it's hard to say how long it actually sat at the guy's house. Relatively uh, inexpensive buy. It's a good little rat rod car for me for the shop. I'm going to mount this coil up higher. I'm going to get a longer wire here. Mount this coil up on the side out of the way. And uh, you can see the fuel filter, those see through ones. It's nice and clear, clean. Get some, uh, get some spark plugs on order. Maybe I'll run up to the store and get some spark plugs, put those in it today, and uh, check those points again while it's running. You know, have somebody turn it over for me so I can make sure the spark's good, make sure they're set right. And uh, I'm gonna drive this thing around the yard here before I go get the spark plugs. All right, we just poured the gas cleaner in here, and actually I popped the, popped the hood. I'm by myself today, so it's hard to get this hood open. A guy, a buddy of mine just stopped by, had him open it while I pulled the lever. We have to fix that, but when you bang on this thing, totally empty, totally empty. So let's just go ahead and throw some fresh gas in it. And I should have done that in the first place. It's been one of those days. Uh, normally I put some freshy fresh in there and with the fuel treatment, but uh, I thought it had plenty in there because it smelled so fresh in the back in the fuel filter. But let's just go ahead and put, you know, three, four, five gallons in here and see what happens. See if the tank holds it. Make sure the tank actually holds it and doesn't leak out. Uh, we can watch it and see if any fuel lines are leaking while it sits here now that it's pressure, uh, pressurized. 
And when I took the fuel filter off earlier, it was pressurized, so that's a good sign. Let's just go ahead and, and you know get at least three, four gallons in here. Make sure it's full, full enough to start it and run it. So it might not even need spark plugs. It could just be out of gas. That's a good couple gallons there. Let's fire this thing back up. Yeah, just need some fresh gas. It's idling pretty, pretty pretty weak, but uh, I'm going to run up and get some spark plugs or clean those off. But uh, I'll keep starting it and run it and just keep, get it warmed up and get it used to uh, being run again and uh, tune this thing up and off up the road I'm going to go. Well, it's running good now that we got the fresh gas in there. I didn't even have to tune it up and uh, get that vehicle running. If it's been sitting around, just do what I did, go over the basics, get it started. I'm going to take this thing for a test ride. So, uh, until next time, keep the two guys out too. Get some of it. Save that money and do it yourself. Subscribe and like. I'm not a pig, I'm a lawyer. <laughs>